Well, for more on the life of a doctor for an we speak to human rights lawyer and anti-apartheid activist, Professor Bonnie Pigana Prof, thank you so much for your time and thank you for joining us on our program this morning. Um, you know, in a number of, of articles, she's been described, Dr. Jinwala, that is, as a torchbearer um, of South Africa's first post-apartheid parliament. Uh, talk to us about that, about the burden um, of being a founding speaker for such a critical and pivotal moment in South Africa's history. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you to, for the invitation. And also thank you uh, to the viewers uh, on this occasion, this early Saturday uh, morning. It's a, it's a very momentous occasion for, for this nation. And especially so, I think, um, for those of us who uh, were with her in the various forms of the liberation uh, struggle. I got to know Dr. Ginola and met her for the first time uh, in London in, in 1978. Um, and Dr. Ginola was the powerhouse, the intellect, um, the speechwriter for um, the late President uh, Oliver Tambo. Um, she was a strategist. Indeed, indeed, she started the international office of the ANC with President Tamu uh, um, during during our time in London. Um, she regaled us with stories about um, those early days of trying to uh, establish ANC in various African uh, countries and meeting. Um, with the heads of state at that time, and she was indeed as is often she is often described as formidable, but she was formidable not just in stature. She was rather a smallish figure, wasn't she? Uh, but she was formidable in terms of her intellect and and her very incisive uh, reasoning uh, uh, of a philosopher and and, and lawyer. But she was actually also a very committed and dedicated uh, freedom fighter. Mm. Uh, uh, she spent her time very much in the background, um, very much enabling the leadership to function and function very, very effectively, based as she was by the time I got to know her uh, in London. Right. Of course, you mentioned her role, you know, in the background, um, assisting a lot of these leaders, uh, shaping and curating a lot of their public addresses and speeches. Um, her first public appointment into public office was, of course, as the first speaker of the National Assembly in a democratically elected um, government. Talk to us about how she used that strategizing mind, that intellect, um, to help South Africa in those early days because, you know, our post-apartheid legislation was so instrumental in driving the sort of constitutional reforms, the justice reforms um, that have formed part of the democracy that we enjoy today. Absolutely. Nobody could have done that job. And nobody could have done that job as well as Dr. Ginola did as the first speaker of the National Assembly in South Africa. Uh, she, she brought into that job a knowledge, um, historical, philosophical, political, legal, a knowledge of South Africa and its politics, a knowledge of the liberation struggle and its ups and downs and its strengths and its weaknesses, but also a knowledge of people she knew personally, just about everybody. Uh, who was serving in that parliament. But also she brought with her something that is not said very much, authority. Uh, to be a speaker, you have to be somebody with authority, that, that you will that gavel, and everybody uh, responds to the authority that you wield. It's, authority, it's an authority of reason, authority of argument, and authority of mind that she brought into that office. And everybody, whatever political persuasion one came from at that time, it was the government of national unity, if you be remembered, mm. and it was a very difficult time which just emerged, I think, from the violence of the, on the interregnum before 
and, and the death of many people, Pisani and others, were very, very significant uh, uh, at that time. She brought a sort of uh, 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 stature and authority that actually made people feel confident uh, with her. Uh, and, and also she was known, and uh, she's always been known, to be a person of fairness and justice. And, and, and she, she did not accept anybody who wanted to make shortcuts. So in the context of our uh, ANC activities in London, she, she always argued for, for straightforward fairness and doing things fairly and justly. And in a sense, that was a lawyer in her. That's why uh, the first parliament was important. I dealt with her in that parliament as the chairperson of the South African Human Rights Commission. And, and we, we, the process that led to the appointment, in, in our case, in, in those Chapter 9 institutions, it was, it was not without difficulty. Mm. It was not without a great deal of engagement and, 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 and argument among political parties, even within the African National Congress. But, but she was held in high esteem within the ANC, and other political parties that were not part of the ANC got to respect her uh, a great deal. To, to be a speaker, you've got to be somebody who, who is genuinely held in respect. You exercise that power with authority, but, but really, at the end of the day, you must be a person of respect. Indeed. You know, when we look at her life, um, Professor, and we sort of reflect on the, the, the different milestones, you know, we look at her days as a, as a young girl and, you know, her issue, her strong, uh, uh, being strongly aggrieved by the colonial oppression of the time and it informing so many of the personal choices that she then made um, as, a, as a result of that. Um, what would you say would be her reflections of South Africa today? You know, we, we understand fairness and justice to have been sort of like the bedrock upon which she built her life. But when you look at South Africa today, the social, the political and economic landscape, um, if you will, so much of it is unfair, is unjust. Um, what, what were her reflections on South Africa today? Let, let, me, let me say two things. Uh, 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 one preliminary point that gives me a chuckle. I wonder how she would have dealt with the EFF and, uh, and, the, and the idea of the Commander-in-Chief uh, <laughs> in Parliament. Um, I, I think the, 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 the interchange between Julius Malema and, uh, and Freni would have been very interesting to observe. Yeah. Uh, just, that's just by the way, uh, because that's what Parliament has become. Is this, these mm. days, not what it used to be. But, but my sense is that at the time I worked with her again very closely as a Vice Chancellor of UNISA to mark the 10th anniversary of the democratic South Africa um, in 2004. Um, the university honored uh, with honorary degrees three significant personalities in the shaping of our democracy. One was Dr. Freni Jinwala, the other was Chief Justice Arthur Chaskelson, and the other was uh, Dr. Bridelia Bam. And around that, I, I, I had to have conversations with her about, she asked very closely why um, it, it was felt necessary by the university to, to select her in, in the way it did. But she was very, very honored by it, but she didn't want to take it for granted because she argued that there were so many um, in that parliament mm. who shaped the parliament, who shaped the legal environment and the, and the rules of parliament. Um, and that, uh, but we said to her, we think that you are symbolic um, of that parliament and you led it and you directed it, you gave it character. Uh, that parliament at that time. But then in, 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 in September, um, uh, when 2008, I think, when uh, President Mbeki was removed by the African National Congress, she was outraged. She was 
outraged by that. And she was very loyal at the same time to ANC and its, and its manner in which it, it, it made its decision making, even as she strongly disapproved of it. Um, I remember we had uh, some meetings to try to see what is it that can be salvaged from the Mbeki heritage uh, in Parliament at that time. We right. had a series of meetings uh, at UNISA during those days to really try to establish something that we can salvage uh, for the sake of this country, for the sake of our democratic uh, dispensation. She was outraged by the manner in which the ANC was conducting itself. Not, I mean, of course, of course, Mbeki was very close uh, uh, to him. Uh, but she was outraged by the reason that it was undermining the very basis for which the ANC would look to the people of South Africa to be trusted to govern. Right. And to govern in a manner that is respectable and that is within the law. Professor, un and unfortunately, I'm so sorry to interrupt you there, but we have... Uh, unfortunately run out of time but I, I really would like to thank you so much for coming on to the program today and uh, sharing uh, your personal experiences of the good Dr. Uh, Jinwala. That was a human rights lawyer and anti-apartheid activist, Professor Bonnie Pikiana.